This is the third of four videos from the NTEA Work Truck Show. This video will cover class four through six medium duty electric trucks. If you missed the first two videos, check out the links. I'm gonna try my best to go through this list quickly as there are a lot of medium duty electric trucks. Why are there so many? In video number two, I ended with details of the US Inflation Reduction Act. Class four and larger trucks can qualify for federal tax credits and some state incentives more than light duty trucks. For example, a Freightliner M2 truck costs about $116,000 before you upfit it with a cargo box or whatever you need it to do. The electric version, the EM2, costs about $139,000. According to the new federal tax code, you either get 30% of the electric truck price, that would be a maximum of $40,000 tax credit, or the difference between the electric and the diesel model is $23,000. Therefore, a business would qualify for a $23,000 tax credit for buying one, since it's the lesser of the two numbers. Some states offer additional incentives. California, of course, has their HVIP program, which can be quite generous. The first half of this video will focus on the newcomers, startups, and companies just getting into electric trucks. The second half will go over established truck makers and what they are doing to go electric. I covered the class three light duty Blue Arc van in my last video. Inside, they showed off their next iteration off the platform, a class five crew cab work truck. The class three truck used batteries from Proterra, the electric bus manufacturer. This class five truck uses less expensive LFP batteries from our next energy or one. LFP is something I talked about in my previous two videos. Battery size goes up to 316 kilowatt hours and delivers up to 200 miles of range. The dump body was built by Duramag, part of the same shift group as Blue Arc. The electric motor appears to be a Dana e-axle. You'll hear me mention that company a lot during this video. Another thing you'll hear me talk about is EPTO or electric power takeoff. Diesel and gas trucks can power accessories like a hydraulic pump to dump the bed or lift a bucket. For electric trucks, you need to decide if you want to use the drive battery, the really big battery that's used to move the truck, or add an additional battery dedicated to the power takeoff. Using the drive battery makes sense, but if you use the EPTO frequently, it will reduce the range. You'll have to set a limit or reserve enough battery to get home or charge on the way back. The Blue Arc shown decided to go with a dedicated battery for the EPTO. It's a 48 volt system with a battery between 12 and 27 kilowatt hours. That drives the hydraulic pumps to dump the bed. Bollinger, you know they make the B1 SUV and the B2 pickup. Well, yeah, that was the plan. Bollinger needs to do whatever it takes to make money fast. It was decided in January that they will focus their attention on the B4 and B5 commercial chassis cab. So showing the B2 in their booth was just a total tease. The batteries are from our next energy again, one, any truck using their batteries currently are using their Aries one series. They did not confirm the electric motor supplier they would be using for production, but the truck on the floor had the Dana TM4 motor. I told you you would hear the name often. Dana TM4, the Sumo series, is becoming popular. They even created their own website dedicated to the product. Going alphabetically, Centro offers the Logistar or LS400. It's available as a class four van or chassis cab. That's all I got. Karma Automotive took over the design of the Fisker Karma and is still making the EV. To be clear, Fisker has regrouped and is preparing to launch the ocean. Karma is a different company now, with a common heritage. They've used their electric vehicle expertise to offer an electric version of the Ford E450 cutaway. Powered by Karma, the Ford E Transit does not offer a comparable model from the factory, so Powered by Karma has a place in the market. Lion Electric. They're cool. I don't know how else to say it. The Lion 5 and 6 look sleek. I had a chance to drive the Lion 6 and it was kind of a blast. I wasn't able to find out what drive motor they're using. However, the batteries are interesting. They currently use batteries from BMW based on the i3 pack. 
I thought the representative who told me that was lying, but, but there it is. They're building a plant in Quebec to begin manufacturing their own pack and plan to shift to that sometime this year. Line is also really big into school buses and public transportation. Electric trucks have a sound generator to warn people walking around them, since otherwise it's very quiet. The trucks at the ride and drive had them turned off to avoid irritating everybody. Their school bus, however, has a unique tone that kind of sounds like an ice cream truck. A tune that comes out to let kids know that the bus is coming. Very important feature. Motive Power Systems is best known for their electric step vans. They provide the power system and work with bodybuilders to complete their product. They also apply their solution to conversions, including trolleys and RVs. That's right, an electric Winnebago powered by Motive. They do their own electric motors, co-designed with a company called Nidic Motor, and they also use BMW batteries. That's two in a row. They too will be moving away from BMW batteries, so I guess either BMW doesn't want to make them anymore, or they became too expensive. Motive will switch to one batteries. Re is an Israeli startup with probably the most unique product in trucks. They've developed what they call the Re Corner, a module that contains the suspension, brakes, steering linkage, and the drive motor. It's not a hub motor like what Lordstown uses on their pickup. The motor is connected to a short drive axle and located inboard. Since all Re Corners have steering linkages, that means you can have four-wheel steering. This is, seems like a no-brainer. Large vehicles could really benefit from the maneuverability that it offers. However, the rear axle on medium-duty trucks are massive, super strong. Re needs to match that strength with their modules. A Class 5 truck was on display with a Morgan Olsen Proxima body on top. They're also working on their own Class 3 light-duty offering. Microvast is their battery supplier. Via Motors, I talked about them in the last video, also makes a truck that goes into class four and five use. I was not able to determine what motors or batteries they use. Production is scheduled to begin in 2024 to satisfy pre-orders. Workhorse has an existing class four truck, the W750. It shares the same front cab as Green Power Motor Company. At the show, they unveiled a new class five to six truck called the W56, I like that name. You may recall that when Workhorse went public as a SPAC, they were making the C1000 delivery truck ready for production. That didn't pan out and the program was scrapped. The W56 fills that void by offering 1,000 cubic feet of cargo space, up to 10,000 pounds of payload in its class six configuration, up to 150 miles of range using LFP batteries provided by CATL, CATL, some people pronounce it cattle, is the leader in lithium ion phosphate battery design. The Chinese company has its battery design being built by Mercedes in Hungary, and Ford announced that they will work with them too as they build a plant in Michigan. Alphabetically last, but not least amongst the newcomers, is Exos. They make a class 5 to 6 step van and a class 6 to 7 chassis cab. The step van is another truck that uses the Dana TM4. The battery is their own design called Lyra, available in a 140 kilowatt hour size, good for 100 miles of range, or 280 kilowatt hours for 200 miles of range. The coolest thing about Exos, they currently have trucks working for Loomis as money transportation. I assume those trucks have additional armor protection, so they're heavier, and they have been in service since 2019. Quick pit stop. If this is the kind of stuff that you like and want to see more of, consider subscribing and go ahead and hit that like button. If you want to smash the like button and that's your thing, go ahead. Back to the trucks. Let's look at established medium duty truck manufacturers. If you go by market share, Ford is by far the leader with its super duty based trucks, plus the F650 and 750 models. Further down, we have Ram and GM. They do okay. What do they all have in common? None of them have announced electric versions of these medium duty trucks. They all have their hands full transitioning their light duty pickups, cars, SUVs, and crossovers to battery electric. BYD is not a startup. They're massive in China, but they are new to the US. They offer the 6F model. 
The two leading manufacturers of LFP batteries in the world are currently CATL and BYD. So this truck offers their LFP commercial batteries. Freightliner is part of Daimler truck, offers the EM2. Batteries are, once again, LFP chemistry from CATL. The drive unit, however, is from Detroit, as in Detroit Diesel, but they've rebranded as Just Detroit since they have growing business in electric motors, e-axles, and even charging solutions. There is also Freightliner Custom Chassis. They make an electric chassis, the MT50E, that can be used for walk-in vans. It uses the Dana ES9000R e-axle and a 226 kilowatt hour battery from Proterra, good enough for 150 to 170 miles. Mack Trucks unveiled the MD Electric at the show, and it looks sweet. I want that bulldog on the hood. If I saw one at a truck stop, I would be tempted to rip it off and would probably get caught in the process and pummeled by some trucker named Large Marge. <laughs> be sure and tell them Large Marge sent ya. <laughs> Mac uses batteries and electric motors from C Electric. Never heard of them? Me neither. But they have a solid foothold in this segment. Founded in Australia a decade ago, they have expanded to add operations in the US. Mac is part of Volvo Truck Group, and they too have their own electric trucks in the heavy duty class. I'll talk about them in the next video. Hino Trucks. Guess who they use for their M5E? C Electric. C is also working on their own Class 6 step van, the SV6. Hino also offers the L6E. Isuzu did have a conversion available using C Electric. At the show, they revealed the Class 5 2025 all-new Isuzu NRR EV. An interesting approach, it offers 20 kilowatt battery modules that can be offered in various numbers to provide the range needed three, five, seven, or nine modules, providing a range up to 235 miles. International has the EMV, a Class 6 truck that uses Dana axle and lithium iron phosphate batteries. I drove the truck and I liked how it allows the driver to easily change the regenerative braking levels. Even at its highest level of regenerative braking, it will not bring the truck to a complete stop. That was done intentionally to require the driver to use the brakes regularly and keep them functioning. Finally, we have the Kenworth K270E and Peterbilt 220 EV. They are both part of Packar, so same truck. Batteries are from Transpower. No, 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 not that. Transportation Power, Transpower for short. Hey, you know what? Just just call them Meritor because that's who acquired them too. This move to electric vehicles is incredibly disruptive. You can see that changes are taking place all over the place. Companies jockeying for positions to take advantage of this transition. I'll talk about some of these topics in the final heavy duty conclusion to this series. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe this video if you enjoyed it. And oh yeah, keep on trucking.